Chapter 54 In a Year with No Name The dead do not measure the passage of time. A minute, an hour, a century are all the same to them. Nine million years could pass, one named for every species on earth. And yet, it would be no different from a single revolution around the sun. They do not feel the heat of flames or the cold of space. They do not suffer the mourning of loved ones left behind or carry the anger for all things they had yet to do. They are not at peace, nor are they in turmoil. They are not anything but gone. Their next stop is infinity and the mysteries that might wait there. The dead have nothing left to them but a silent faith in that unknowable infinity. Even if theirs is a belief that nothing waits but an infinity of infinities. Because believing in nothing is still believing in something. And only by reaching eternity will anyone know the truth of it all. The deadish are very much like the dead, but with one exception. The deadish do not know infinity, which means they don't have to concern themselves with what waits beyond. They have something the dead do not. They have a future, or at least the hope of one. In a year that is yet to be named, she opens her eyes. A pink sky, a small circular window, weak, tired, a vague sense of having been somewhere else before arriving here. Otherwise, her mind is clouded and full of intangibles, nothing to grab onto. She knows this feeling. She has experienced it twice before. Revival is not like waking up. It is more like putting on an old pair of favorite pants. There is a struggle at first to fit inside one's own skin, to feel comfortable in it, to let its fabric stretch and breathe and remind you why it's your favorite. There is a familiar face before her. It gives her comfort to see it. He smiles. He is exactly the same and yet somehow different. How can that be? Perhaps it is just a trick of that strange light coming in through the little window. Hey, he says gently. She's alert enough to realize he's holding her hand. Perhaps he's been holding it for a while. Hey, she says back, her voice gravelly and rough. Weren't we just running? Yes, there was something going on and we were running. His smile broadens. Tears fill his eyes. They drop slowly as if gravity itself has become less adamant, less demanding. When was that? Citra asks. Only a moment ago, Rowan tells her. Only a moment ago. Hey, friends. Narrator here. That concludes The Toll. Book 3 in Arc of a Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. Thanks so much for hanging through all 54 chapters. I know it wasn't easy, especially with my hiatus there in the middle. But I can't thank you enough for all of your time, your attention, and most importantly, grabbing those headphones. So once again, thank you all for tuning in. Y'all really did give me the motivation to move forward and finish the series. And if you're hungry more from the same world, there is another book that I won't be reading called The Gleanings by Neil Schusterman as well. So for now... Thanks for listening. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.